In the previous video we saw how to create this species richness map that shows you the relative number of species recorded in each tetrad. In this video we're going to look at a slightly different way of displaying the same information to actually show the numbers of species and colour code them for different tetrads. This is a slightly more complicated process and you have to be careful to do things in the right order but it can achieve good results. So our starting point is again to use the special maps wizard. And as usual we choose our settings for plants and for the county that we're interested in. And if you look at all the options here there's actually quite a lot of different options for having number bands of different numbers of species. They're all set up for 10 kilometer squares, as we saw in the previous video, and we will have to change that. But we also need to decide which banding we're going to use. In fact, it doesn't really matter which one you choose to start with, because once again, you can edit the choice that you've made once you put it onto the map. The ones that I find most useful are the ones that actually give a specific number band. If you use the ones further down that give you species greater than 50, greater than 100 and so on, they can be quite difficult to use because it becomes critical as to the ordering of the dots on the map. If you have the 50 dots sitting above the 100 dots, the data for the 100 ones can get obscured. So for the example we're going to do here, all we need to do is find the one that says 1 to 10 species, 10 kilometer, tick that, and as usual give it a slightly simpler name. So we're now looking at a map that shows every 10 kilometer square for which there are between 1 and 10 species recorded. The first thing to do is to change this from being a 10 kilometer map to a tetrad map. So we'll open up the feature list, find our data object, right click over its title, show underlying data, click on the SQL button, and as we've seen before, everywhere where it says 10k, we need to edit that to become 2k. Having done that, click on the Save button and OK it. As always, it tells us that nothing will change until we reload the map. We can OK that. We can close. Shut the feature list. Go to File. Reload. And we've got a lot of black blobs all over the place now. Back into the feature list and the main thing to do here is to change the size. Right click two kilometer. So what we now have are all the two kilometer squares that have between one and ten species recorded. We're now going to go on to add some further number bands to fill in all the other squares that presumably have more species than that. But in order to make sensible choices about the number banding, we do need to know what the overall range is that we're dealing with for our county. The simplest way to do that is to go over to the analysis part of MapMate. We're still looking at plants in our vice county, and we need to open up the species richness queries. And we need to run the one that says species per two kilometer square. This shows the total number of species in each of our two kilometer squares. Um, just to make it a bit easier to see what's going on, I'm going to click in the species column and sort it so that the highest number is at the top. So what this tells me is that in order to map our species, given the current state of recording in this particular set of data, we need some number bands that start from one and go all the way up to 41 exactly how you choose to split up the number of species and how many different bands you want is entirely up to you but for our purposes um, we'll do three bands we'll do 1 to 10 we'll do 11 to 25 and we will do 26 and above but all we need to know from this is the range so we can now close that go back to our map so if we open up the feature list again and find our data object click on the data object row to highlight the entire row. Now MapMate doesn't make this at all obvious, but having highlighted the row, it is possible to copy it and paste it so that we get a second data object. And the easiest way to do that is just by doing Control C to copy and then Control V to paste. 
and we want three number bands so I'll do exactly the same thing again control C to copy control V to paste the other way of doing the copy and paste is is to highlight the one that you want to copy and then go to the edit menu and you can get to the copy and paste options from there but it does exactly the same thing as the control C and so on so we now have three data objects but they're all doing the same thing so we're going to edit the SQL so that they pick up different number bands it's very important though that the first thing we change is the title of each of these data objects because you'll find that if you leave them all the same title and then you go to edit one of them in fact all three of them will get changed so we'll leave our 1 to 10 species as it is but for the second one we want to right click and rename and having typed in the name that you want just press enter to save that and then similarly with for the third one right click rename so having renamed them we've got three independent data objects and if we right click and show underlying data and go to the SQL the first one is doing exactly what we want it's got our 2k squares and it's showing between 1 and 10 no further action required there the second one though if we right click show underlying data check the SQL this is the one where we want it to be between 11 and 25 so we need to save and OK and then the third one right click show underlying data go to the SQL and this one we can change to be greater than 25 and save and OK and close and I've just realized I've actually given that the the wrong title it shouldn't be greater than 26 it's greater than greater than or equal to 26 um, so I'll just rename that one more time for consistency it should say greater than 25 press enter as usual nothing's changed on the map until we go to file reload and that is looking quite promising um, but all our dots are the same size and the same color we probably want to keep them the same size this time but we do want to change the colors um, entirely up to you again which colors you use but I'm going to use red to highlight the squares that don't seem to have had very much recording in them so right click over the color box choose line color set that one to red and then for the next category up 11 to 25 species I'm going to right click line color and choose blue and then for my final category greater than 25 species right click line color and I'll choose the bright green so that's a slightly garish display of colors you may wish to choose something else but it does nicely pick out the um, various different bandings and as we might expect the least well recorded squares are some of the ones that are grouped around the edge of our county but it gives a, a nice clear indication of which ones have the greatest species richness because of the way we set this map up it does give us information on how many species there are in each square which means we can now set up a key to display that on our map as usual when adding keys and other such items to a map the first thing you have to do is to draw a box in which you wish the key to appear click and drag and then keep this now we go to the edit menu insert keys and we can just choose key as we've seen in previous videos mapmate tends to draw its keys at a rather large size so we now need to go back into the feature list I'm going to sort our feature list by type by clicking on the type heading to get the key items all together and then go over to the size column right click and I'm going to choose user defined and set it to 4000 press enter and the same for the other two and as we've seen in previous videos you could then spend some time moving the key items around to group them together a bit more closely and just making the map look exactly the way you want 
um, but that is basically doing what we set out to do. We now have a different version of our species richness map at tetrad level, but this time giving a bit more information on exactly how many species there are in each of those squares.